I'm Sam Crawford, service technician here at Intellimeter Canada, and on behalf of Intellimeter, I'd like to welcome you to our video training series. So in this video, we are going to be demonstrating the installation process for the I-636 meter. But before we get started, let's just take a brief moment to go over some of the components that you should have received. In your package shipped from Intellimeter, you should have received the I-636 meter itself, depending if one was purchased, possibly an automation module. You should have a set of CTs, up to 16 of them, with standard six foot CT lead length. You should have 16 two pin connectors. And lastly, possibly a meter display unit or MDU for short, depending if one was purchased. You can refer to your packing slip, shop drawings, or other paperwork provided to ensure you have all the parts that you should have received. Now keep in mind that here we have built a mock-up panel for the sake of this demonstration video. In real life application, you would want to ensure that any electrical equipment or panel is locked off before opening and performing any work. If work must be performed on a live electrical panel or equipment, please ensure that you are wearing the appropriate protective gear, such as an arc flash suit, complete with helmet and gloves. Before we move forward, let's just take a minute to go over some of the properties of the I-636 meter itself. Now the I-636 is capable of single phase, two phase, and three phase metering with up to 16 metering points if all single phase, eight metering points if all two phase, and five metering points if all three phase. Our voltage input is auto ranging and can be used on 120 to 347 volts line to neutral. Now the I-636 will come with a preset configuration which will be predetermined based on your metering needs. It must be installed in accordance with this configuration in order to function properly. We're gonna start with mounting the I-636. Your meter will most likely come with brackets, which you can use to mark where you need to drill and tap your holes. And once the meter is mounted, we can move on to the installation of the CTs. As you can see, our I-636 is now mounted, so we've gone ahead and installed our CTs. Now because the metering needs will be predetermined, each CT will be pre-assigned to a certain breaker and phase. So as an installer, you'll simply have to follow the paperwork provided to ensure that each CT is being installed in its correct location. Once all our CTs are in place, we can go ahead and terminate the CT leads into the I-636. The termination of the CT leads to the I-636 is going to be achieved through the use of two pin connectors. Now these two pin connectors might already be in place in the slots on top of the meter, but you can remove them to give yourself easier access. We're going to make sure that the positive terminal is with the white wire and that the negative terminal is with the black wire. We're going to start with removing the cover off the 636. We're going to loosen off the screws. And we're going to follow the labels on top of the cover for each CT, starting with CT1 on the far left, all the way down to CT16 on the far right. Now it's time to install our reference voltage. Now this is used to both power the I-636 up as well as provide the meter with reference to the different voltage phases. Because this is a three phase panel, we are going to require a separate 15 amp three pole breaker. So we can go ahead and terminate one end of our wires into the breaker and neutral block. And once your wires are in place, you can run the four wires back down to the I-636 and terminate them into the voltage connector accordingly. Now you can remove this to make your life a little easier. You're going, want, going to want to observe the phasing on the breaker you used for the reference voltage and match it to the phasing on this voltage connector. The last component to install would be the meter display unit, or MDU for short, depending if one was purchased. Now this MDU needs a 12 volt power supply in order to function, and it communicates to the I-636 using RS-45 via the RJ-12 connectors. Uh, therefore, it should be shipped out as a complete assembly, and as an installer, all you should have to do is bring 120 volts into the 12 volt power supply. Just to sum up what we've done so far, we've mounted the I-636, we've installed all of our CTs in their correct locations, we've terminated the CT leads into the two pin connectors at the top of the I-636, and we've installed our reference voltage. So we've gone ahead now and powered up the I-636, and now we can discuss troubleshooting techniques 
using the LED light lens at the bottom of the meter. So the far right set of green LEDs tell you what type of configuration is loaded onto the i636. The red LEDs are load lights that will blink depending on how much load is on each meter. Over here on the left side, we have an amber LED. Now, if we have any amber LEDs, this indicates that there is a problem with the installation of one or more of the CTs. So we can start our troubleshooting by removing the cover, and we can unplug each CT one at a time until that amber LED goes away. So as you can see, when I remove CT number one, the blinking light goes away. I'll put it back in. We got an, a blinking amber LED, and now it's gone. So this tells us that there is a problem with the installation of CT1. Now it could be a problem with either the CT being installed in the reverse direction, the CT leads could be reversed at the two-pin connector, or the CT could be installed on an incorrect phase. These would be all the areas to investigate, and once you find where the problem is, make corrections accordingly until you have no amber LEDs on the light bar. The I636 meter should now be fully installed and ready to use without the use of automation. Instructions for adding automation will be covered in separate videos. But for now, once again, I'm Sam Crawford. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next video.